Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Betty. Welcome to my channel. Uh, hit the like button if you like, and please subscribe. I'd appreciate it so very, very much. Now, I've got an article here about uh, inflation, and uh, let's see what they've got to say. Uh, I read some of it earlier and went over it, and to me, I can't go by what Biden says. He says, oh, we're just leveling off. Everything's going to be just fine. Really, is it going to be just fine? Okay, I don't know. The latest inflation rise for August has been announced as 8.3%. Although it is marginally down from July, necessity prices continue their upward trend. National year-over-year -year real average wage earnings are also down 3.4%, causing erosion in Georgia's average household income. Average hourly pay in America adjusted for inflation is minus 2.8% in the past year. Inflammation has been eating up wage gains since April of 2021. Shows little sign of significant easing. Washington Post communist Heather Long said on Twitter, With a minus 3.4% wage inflation for August, Georgia's average household income has seen a minus $3,049 over year year-over-year year loss. Wow! Bringing the state's current average household income down from 89,679 to 86,630 a year. Wow! On Tuesday, the Bureau of Labor Statistics released the Consumer Price Index data for the 12 months ending August 2022. The data showed 8.3% all items annual increase, which represented a 0.1% rise from July on a seasonally adjusted basis. Seasonally adjusted basis. Sorry about that. Some of the largest contributors were increase, increases in the indexes for shelter, food, medical care. According to the BLS, real Average hourly earnings for all employees declined 2.8% seasonally adjusted from August 21 to August 22. The change in real average hourly earnings combined with a decrease of 0.6% in the average work week resulted in 3.4% decrease real average weekly earnings in the last year. Un among other data, Food prices rose another 0.8% in August and are up 11.4% over last year. Take-home grocery prices rose 0.7% in August and 13.5% in the past 12 months. The index for shelter climbed 0.7% and 6.2% in the last year. The medical care index, index rose 0.7% in August after rising 0.4% in July. Mike Huckabee, former Arkansas governor and Fox News contributor, took to Twitter to put the latest CPI number into perspective. 8.3% inflation means your salary is about 1 slash 12 gone. If you make the same pay as last year, Higher prices robbed you a full month of your pay. If you buy the same things this year as last year, infl inflammation, inflation, inflation, oh boy, <laughs> hang in there people, I will get there. In, I've read so much, it's just a little, little, little. <laughs> inflation is trying to pay for it with 11 months worth of pay instead of 12 months worth, Huckabee wrote in his tweet. That just, boy, oh boy, oh boy, but Biden says we're just leveling off. We're doing fine. Everything looks absolutely wonderful. Okay. Well, we'll see. 
now let's see here what this one is I'll try to get another one in if I can and uh, this one is uh, a very interesting the decision of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis to transport migrants from the border to New York City Chicago Washington DC angered White House officials who were already upset by Texas Governor Greg Abbott's plan to do the same. Although it is unclear what the Biden administration can do to prevent Republican governors, AXOS reports that officials are anticipated to address the matter on Friday morning. According to NBC News, there is friction about what to deal with the influx of migrants at the southern border between Biden's White House officials and Department of Homeland Security officials. DHS authorities want to airlift immigrants to the northern border in order to relieve strains on the southern facilities, which are already overcrowded. <clears throat> well, that's where I came in on one of my videos and said he had no plans, did he? Those poor immigrants, you can't help to feel bad for them. They don't know where they're going to be the next day or the next hour or the next 10 minutes. However, the White House has slowed down preparations for a planned means of moving migrants around the nation. They've slowed down the preparations. Well, that's pretty good. DeSantis and Abbott were accused of kidnapping by the Democrat governor of California, Gavin Newsom, who made the announcement on social media kidnapping. Clearly, transporting families, including children, across state lines under false pretenses is morally unprehensible, but it may also be illegal, he said. Well, I could see that. Karen Jean Pierre, Pierre, Jean Jean Pierre, Karine, Jean Pierre, okay, the press I have fun pronouncing these names, but I don't mean to disrespect them. Please understand. Okay. I'm working on learning to speak their names and places where they live. Hmm. The press secretary for the White House referred any inquiries concerning legal measures in reacting to Republican migrate transports to the Department of Justice while upholding the current process for dealing with immigrants entering the country. I'd never make it on TV as a news reporter, would I? <laughs> no, no, I wouldn't want that responsibility. This is bad enough, you know. <laughs> but I love doing this, because if I make a mistake, I mean, you know, everybody understands, hopefully. Oh, boy. She told reporters on Thursday, we have had a process in place. There's a legal way of doing this and for managing migrates. According to DHS data provided to NBC and AXOS, the number of migrants crossing the U.S.-Mexican border is getting close to 8,000 a day. Mm, that is a lot. Can you picture 8,000 people running by your house a day? The proceeding is a seminary of an article that originally appeared on Brit Bart. And that is B-R-E-I-T-B-A-R-T, Brit Bart, if you want to look it up. 8,000 per day. That is a lot. And then poor people don't know where they're going to end up. They don't know if they're going to get fed. They don't know if they're going to get water to drink, a shower. <clears throat> Mercy to Murgatroyd. All right. Here is another one that I looked up today. And this is terrible. The FBI is more focused on political vendettas than child sex crimes. Within the past several weeks, the FBI has constantly proven itself to be biased and not at all credible in the eyes of many Americans. After the August raid on former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago home, FBI remained tight-lipped about the probable cause that gave them the right to conduct this raid. 
Meanwhile, the Justice Department fought tooth and nail against having a special master review the documents confiscated by the FBI. Unfortunately, new developments about the FBI have been revealed and they're not good. This time, these reports dealing with the FBI putting child sex crimes on the back burner to hone in on political investigations. A disgraceful new low for the FBI. According to multiple FBI whistleblowers, child sex, sex crimes cases are being bumped down so that agents can focus their energies on investigating so-called right-wing extremism. Extremism. Not only that, oh, I've got a bug in here, a fly, or a gnat, I don't know which. Uh, not only that, but whistleblowers also informed congressional, congressional GOP members of the FBI uh, proposed fully exaggerating politically motivated threats and violence. Right now, leaders of the FBI, rather than agents as a collective, are being cited as ones pushing for petty politics to be prioritized against legitimate threats against children. God love the children. And they need help so desperately from these sex offenders and their own family even, let alone outsiders, uncles. It's sickening. Likewise, as the FBI relentlessly directs its attention on the events of January 6, 2021, crucial responsibilities that the agency should handle are being sacrificed. Upon hearing this news from whistleblowers, House Republicans have expressed alarm and demand for the FBI specific details about the current work and operations of the agency. Well, I don't blame them. And Biden's new Gestapo. After the raid on Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate, Republicans warned the FBI was now corrupt and simply being used by the Biden administration to go after its political opponents. Well, we can see that. Plain as a day. Plain as a day. Surely enough, former Trump advisor Steve Bannon and my pillow CEO Mike Lindell each came under fire from the FBI not long afterwards. News of the FBI putting January 6th above all else, overblowing severity of violent political extremism and refusing to aggressively go after child sex crimes is disturbing. It's very disturbing. Very. That is terrible. God love the children. This also raises questions about why the FBI, FBI is still around if it's not willing to do its job and is instead just unofficially working to further Democrat agendas. All things considered, it's now vital for every American to know what the FBI is up to and how this will impact the nation as a whole. No kidding. I mean, good gravy. That is terrible. My gosh, okay. Well, that is all for now. And, um, I will be back a little bit later. I've got some more I want to go over and check out. And so uh, I'm just going to sign off for now and say uh, I will see you later. Get this posted. And uh, God bless and stay safe. And I will talk to you uh, probably in another hour or two. And um, take care. Say some prayers. I'll tell you what. They're needed worse and worse every single minute. Bye.